I'm Anil Kumar and in this video we'll try to understand what are quartiles and what is interquartile range. Well, as you know, quartiles divide data into how many groups? Quartiles, four groups. So this word itself gives you the meaning kind of quartiles divide data into four equal groups. So that is the basics. So whenever we are talking about quartiles, we are looking at a piece of data. So let us say, let us say this is the data for us. Let's say this is the data for us from here to there. Okay. So data will have a lowest limit, which we call as the lowest datum. and the highest limit which we'll call as the highest datum and in between we divide it into four equal parts that means just the center so that is called also the median so it is also called the median which you know center value we call this as second quartile Q2. Now the data which is between Q2 to the lowest is again divided into one quarter and we call this as the first quartile. Or Q1 and here is the center value is the third quartile. or Q3. That is what we know and the data which is between first and the third quartile is kind of the central data. So this data is kind of the central data around the median, right? So around the second quartile is known as interquartile range. Right. So this central value, which is concentrated around the median, is the interquartile range. Now the question is, if we are given, let's say, raw data, how do we find the first, second and third quartile and the interquartile range? So let's take an example. So in the first example, I'll randomly write few numbers. Let's say the numbers are 2, 3, 1, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, 3, 4. So we have written 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 numbers. Okay. Now these 11 numbers are odd number of numbers. So in this case, what do we have? We have total of 11 numbers. So total numbers are 11 is it okay now if I want to find the center value that means uh, position of Q2 let's start with the center how do I find it well first step should be arrange them in a particular order right so so first step should be always to arrange them in a particular order. So let's arrange in, let's say ascending order. Okay. That means increasing order. So let's rewrite our numbers, arranging them in ascending order. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 numbers. So we can begin with any number to start with 2 let's write 2 here okay 3 is, comes after 2 1 comes before 2 okay 4 comes after 6 comes after 8 comes after 6 then 9 and 10 and 12 and then 3 3 comes here let's put 3 here and then we have 4 let's put 4 here 
So we have arranged all the numbers now in increasing order. Let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we have all 11 numbers in ascending order. Now what is the position of the median which is called the second quartile? To find the position what we do here is if the numbers are n for example then the position of second quartile that is 50 percent right should be so we are finding q2 so q2 position is at 50 percent level so what we do here is if n is the total number right so we say oh, to find that position we say n plus 1 times 50 percent that means times 0.50 to find the position this gives us the position we are just finding the position not the number okay so n in our case is 11 so we'll do 11 plus 1 which is 12 times 0 0.5 so let's calculate this position so 12 half of 12 is 6 half of 12 is 6 so sixth position is that okay so let's circle the number at sixth position which is in our case starting from left one two three four five six so the number four here is the second quartile you get the idea right so so from here we can say that q2 is equal to the number four do you get an idea right now how do we find the first quartile to find the first quartile, it is always 25% mark. So this is at 25%, this is at 50%, and this one is at 75%. So 25% off, we could do this, 0 0.25 times, in this case, n is 11, so we'll write 11 plus 1. Is it okay? So which is 1 fourth of 12, 1 fourth of 12, which is third position so we can write this as it is at third position so what value is at third position one two three so this number three do you see that so we get q1 as equals to three how about q3 q3 will be at 75th position right so 0 0.75 times 11 plus 1 which is 3 over 4 times 12 right so 3 times 3 9 so this is at ninth position do you understand so at ninth position we have the third quartile so let's count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 the number 9 becomes q3 do you see that so likewise, we can find first, second, third, fourth, I mean first, second and third quartile from their position number. Now this was a simple case since we had odd numbers in our example. Now what happens if in our example 2, let's say this is example 1, we had odd numbers and let's take even numbers now. Now for simplicity, I'll write down the numbers in increasing order. So let's say the numbers are 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6, 7, 8, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this time we have 12 numbers. So let's say the total number of numbers for us this time is 12. We need to find what is Q1. We need to find what is Q2 and we need to find what is Q3. Can you tell me how? So first of course we need to find their position. Find position. Since the numbers are already in written in increasing order, we can find the position by using this number 12. So position for quartile number 1 is what? 12 plus 1? It is 12 plus 1 times 0 0.25. That is the position number, right? So 12 plus 1 is 
13, right? So 13 times 0.25. That is to say that it is one fourth of 13. Let me take the calculator now and show you. That's a decimal number, right? So it is 13 times 0.25 that gives us in decimals 3.25. Now 3.25 means 1, 2, 3. So somewhere here between these two threes. Do you see that? So 3.25 means a number in between these two. So the position is between, it is 3.25. That simply means that you're looking for a number between these two. So find average of these two. So Q1 will be average of these two. So it will be 3 plus 3 divided by 2, which is 3. So that is Q1. For Q2, let us first find the position. So since the total number is 12, so it will be 12 plus 1, which is 13, times 50%, right? So position is half of 13, right? So let's do it. So 13 divided by 2 is in decimals. 6.5. 6.5 means that it is between 6th and 7th positions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So this number is between 6 and 7, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it is between these two positions. Do you see that? And average of these two gives us Q2. So which is 5 plus 6 divided by 2 or 5.5. Similarly, to find the third quartile, first you find the position. First you find position. So the position here will be 0 0.75 times 12 plus 1. So let's calculate this. 0 0.75 times 12 plus 1 is 13. And in decimals, this is 9.75. That means we are looking for a number which whose position is between 9 and 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it is between these two numbers. Between these two numbers, 7 plus 8, the average of these two gives us the answer, which is 7.5. Do you get an idea? So what we notice here is that to calculate the quartiles we should know exactly how many numbers are there in our data position of these quartiles is q1 25 percent q2 50 percent q3 is at 75 percent so you need to arrange them in increasing or decreasing order once you do that then q1 will be at 25% of total number plus 1. That gives you exact position. If this position is a whole number, as is the case, when we have odd number of data points, then you straight away get your answer. But if we have even number of data points, example here, second example, we had 12. In that case, to find the quartiles, we have to find average of the two adjacent numbers. You get the idea, right? So first find their position using the formula. Position is found using the formula n plus 1 times, depending on which quartile, right? If it is Q1, then it is 25%. If it is Q2, 50%. If it is Q3, 75%. If the number is in decimals, we are looking for averages between the two numbers. I hope this point is very clear and that will help you to quickly find first the position and second the number associated with the quartile. I am Anil Kumar and I hope this concept helps you to calculate quartiles. Now once you calculate the quartiles you can find interquartile range. Now what is interquartile range? Let me extend this. Interquartile range, so let's say IQR, is basically difference between third quartile and the first quartile. So find their difference. In the first example, the interquartile range will be 
9 take away, let me circle the numbers, these two, right? So interquartile range for the first, let's say, interquartile range in this case will be 9 take away 3, which is 6. And in the second example, the interquartile range will be, let me write down here, interquartile range will be equal to 7.5 take away 3. So it is 7.5 take away 3, which is equal to 3.5. So it is 3.5. Let me write down here, 3.5, right? So that is how you could find the interquartile range. So the formula for interquartile range is the difference between the value of third quartile and first quartile, right? So that gives you the central value, right? So central half of the data is represented by interquartile range. So we can call this as central half of the data, right? So that is interquartile range. Now one quarter is towards the lowest quartile, the other quarter is towards the highest quartile between this. So that is how we can separate out the data and analyze it. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope with this video is clear how to calculate first quartile, second quartile and third quartile and find the interquartile range when the data could be even or odd numbers. Thank you and all the best.